Yeah, good morning to all. Glad to see all who are here with us. Let's all stand this time as Al comes and leads us in our call to worship and opening prayer. Number 59, my Lord is near me all the time. Sunday, I think it will be even maybe more difficult. Next Sunday, you lose an hour of sleep. Next Saturday, before you go to bed, you need to put your clocks forward, not back. If you put it back, you'll be two hours late. It'll be over with but the crying. But you need to set your clocks forward one hour. So before you go to bed, if you go to bed, if you go to bed at 12 o'clock, you have to push it to, 12, to 1 o'clock. So you got to remember that. You lose an hour of sleep. No matter how you look at it. This coming Saturday, so Sunday, this coming Sunday at 2, I think 2 o'clock in the morning, begins daylight savings time. So keep that in mind that that's going to be taking place. Also, next Sunday after the morning worship, we will have a special 
business meeting concerning the time of Sunday school and morning worship service. So hopefully, prayerfully, think about it, we'll discuss it, and see what the favor is and see what everybody would like to do concerning the morning Sunday school and morning worship time as far as time. So that's next Sunday. After the morning worship, we will have a special business meeting. So keep that in mind. April the 1st, coming up upon us soon, we will have our Easter banquet. This is following the morning service. Also, on April 1st as well, weather permitting, there will be an egg hunt outside after the banquet. So that will take place. And the egg hunt will be for different uh, classes. We will have some for the little kids, some for the other kids, and then one for the bigger kids. So it will basically be three sections as boys with that. And the bigger kids will be a little bit more involved and a little bit more detailed. So keep in mind that you're going to have to, the big kids, you're going to have to hunt for uh, It's not going to be so noticeable in some cases. So that will be taking place. And also, we will not have um, an evening worship on April the 1st. So keep that in mind. Easter this year is April the 8th. On April the 8th, Easter Sunday, we will have a 10 a.m. morning worship only. No Sunday school, no evening service, 10 a.m. service on Easter. That's what I think I've done over the years, and it's worked quite well as far as having it on Easter. So Easter morning, we'll have a 10 a.m. worship service here. No Sunday school, no evening worship on, uh, on that day as far as April the 8th, uh, that time. Also, we are collecting for Annie Armstrong. Easter offering for North American Missions. Now, North American Missions is mission work being done in the United States. That's being done here. We have collected so far $40. If you feel led to give to that, over and above the giving and the working of the church, do so. There are offering envelopes in the pews. Just put it in there, and it will be designated to and for Annie Armstrong the North American Missions. Any other announcements that I neglected or... I have overpassed or have not reminded people of. Any announcement any other announcements need to come before us? Anything else? If not, our Old Testament scripture is found in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 13 through 25. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 13 through 25. And here, as it is reminded after Moses was given the Ten Commandments here as these are the commands of the Lord and so here Moses related to the people of Israel but it also applies to us today uh, from these verses and from chapter 6 of Deuteronomy starting with verse 13 it says fear the Lord your God serve him only and take your oaths in his name do not follow other gods, that is false gods, the gods of the people around you. For the Lord your for the Lord, for the Lord your God, who is among you, is a jealous God, and his anger will burn against you. He will destroy you from the face of the land. Do not test the Lord your God, as they did in Manasseh. Be sure to keep the commandments of the Lord your God and the stipulations and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so that it may go well that it may go well with you, and you may go and take over the good land that the Lord has promised on earth to your forefathers, thrusting all, out all your enemies before you, as the Lord has said. In the future, when your sons ask you, what is the meaning of the stipulations and decrees in the Lord the Lord our God has commanded you, tell him. We were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt. But the Lord, great God Jehovah, he brought us out of Egypt with his mighty hand. He did it. And before our eyes, the Lord set miracle, miraculous signs and wonders and great and terrible upon the Egyptian and Pharaoh and the whole household. But he brought us out from there to bring us into a 
in, into and, and give us the land that is promised on an oath to our forefathers. The Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God, so that we might always prosper and be kept alive as in the case today. And if we are careful to obey all of his laws before the Lord our God as he has commanded us, there will be, that will be our righteousness. I think today, too, we need to be careful that we do not get caught up in the things of the world and, and, and what happens in, in today as well. There are many, many false gods, many false things that take place in the land. I think today, even just as much as back in the days of Moses, we too need to be careful that we do not start turning to the left or to the right and doing things that would hinder our walk with the Lord. You know, it's so easy to do these days. There are so many things that can just turn us to the side. And we need to be careful. God is still the same. He has not changed. He's a jealous God. He's an, he, he, he will definitely get angry and upset with us when we start to worship other gods or even turn to other things other than Him. God has not changed. I was clearly just clearly states that his ways and his thoughts are beyond ours, but God hasn't changed. And I think too, we, we need to be careful that we do not get caught up in the things just like the people back in Moses' day, back in David's day, back in the Lord's day when, when Jesus walked the face of the earth and even years ago. We need to be careful that we do not allow things to hinder our walk with him. We serve risen Lord. Let us continue to serve and worship Him day by day. May God bless the reading of His Word and may we apply it to our lives and our hearts today. Let us continue as we sing unto the Lord. 106 below in the grave he lay.
Our New Testament scripture is found in the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Here looking at being thankful for what the Lord has and always acknowledging and thanking Him for many things and for things done in our lives. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 and following. Here is one day took place. It says, Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into the village, ten men who had leprosy, they met him. They stood at a distance and they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy or have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw, he was healed. Imagine looking at himself and saying, ah, I am healed. Came back praising God in a loud voice. He drew himself, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And yet he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all men cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was, not, was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. You now we go through many things in life, but always remember, give God thanks and praise for what he is doing and has done in our lives. Never think, not because God doesn't care, but know that God truly does, and he is the one that gives healing. In the way of prayer and prayer requests, in the back of your bulletins there are written a few, and I ask you to remember these in prayer and others as well. I have a message for all here today from Miss Virginia Hall. She is ecstatic. She is happy. Um, Danny Hall is doing a little bit better. Um, they have brought his temperature down to 98.9, which is good because it was up to 100 or a little above that or whatever. So they have take, brought his temperature down. His lungs are clearing up. All the junk is coming out of that. So all that is also clearing up as well. So uh, she has told me to tell everybody she is happy about it. She appreciates all your prayers and to continue to pray for her and for Danny and for the family as well concerning with everything. So uh, as of last night, it says he's doing better, but they still do not have the prognosis concerning how much damage was or was not done as for what is in the brain area with um, the bleeding that is done. So that she does not know at this point of time. She's just happy that other things are progressing and going well, that the fever's down, uh, the lungs are clearing up, and, and so forth, and she, they're taking very good care of her. It's, it's a hard road that they are traveling down right now. It's very difficult, they travel. They go from Slidell, physically as well as spiritually, but they go from Slidell to East Jeff, and then they travel back, and they've been doing this every single day for the past two weeks since Danny Hall has been uh, at East Jeff. So it's been a long, hard road concerning the travel, but also they themselves. It takes a toll on them from time to time. So lift them up in prayer and remember them in prayer, but Danny is doing somewhat better as we now speak, so remember them in prayer. Ms. Joyce is still, at the I is still in ICU at North Shore Hospital. As you continue to remember her, she is doing somewhat better as well. Ms. Hattie Carter, pray for her. They still got her, still got messing up all of her medication, so she is out of whack. So uh, pray for her at the North Shore Living Center and the people there. But remember uh, Ms. Hattie in prayer as well. So remember them. Also, the uh, okay, um, Debbie again pronounced the, the Bethe. Okay. Uh, the Bethay family that we have in the, in the um, bulletin, uh, they're seven, uh, should I say almost eight-year-old son, died this past week of an aneurysm on the brain. Um, so remember the Bethay family, as, that is Debbie's nephew, 
and he was seven years old. He would be, he would have been eight years old this coming Wednesday, uh, very young. And uh, so uh, he died this past week. So remember the Bethay family and all it's going, they're going through. They will have a funeral and everything for him on his birthday this coming Wednesday. So just remember all the family members and all that they're going through, pray for them and traveling mercies for those who will be traveling to uh, the funeral and back as well. So just can, to, so remember them and pray on what they're going through. Other prayer requests, other concerns, other things that you have that you would like to voice this morning? Anyone, anybody? Danny. First, I just give them to my niece, the first C-section of one student her and put here both in the wood. Good. And the uh, Wilkowski family, one thousand I work with, and his son committed suicide. Okay. So, my niece is the first. Okay, sure will. It, it is also good to see Melissa with us this morning. Good to see that you're doing better and Olivia as well. So a prayer of thanksgiving that they are back with us. So that is good. Others? Gloria? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Sure will. Others? Other prayer requests or concerns or thanksgiving? Billy? Okay. Okay. Meditation and shot. He's real love. Uh, He's doing better today. Good. All right. Sure, we'll remember him in prayer. Absolutely. Ginger? Um, Yeah, Tony, I talked to Tony yesterday. He was doing somewhat better. I, I don't know if he just didn't want to come and infect everybody. I don't know, but he was doing somewhat better. He was doing a little work yesterday, but he wasn't feeling 100%. So I remember Tony and Kathy in prayer, as well as the daughter Susan. Susan had a hysterectomy, and she's at home as well. So I remember them in prayer, and all the family members, um, Angel and all of them in prayer, and all that goes on uh, with that family. So just continue to remember that. Other prayer requests, concerns, thanksgiving. Anyone else? Again, just remember each other in prayer and pray for each other. Also, remember, uh, again, traveling mercies, not only for because it's in the funeral, traveling mercies for all of us as we travel in about the city of Slidell, also going back and forth from New Orleans to Slidell, as many people still going back and forth this way, uh, north and south, and also east and west. Just remember everybody on, the, on, the, on these interstates. Pray for this for this small Ohio, um, Ohio uh, Tupelo, Ohio College, and these baseball players and bus driver and wife were killed um, uh, on the interstate of Georgia. Pray for that family and for what they're going through. And also continue to remember the many people devastated by this past week with these tornadoes that went through Alabama and what they're all going through. So. Just continue to remember these people in prayer and, and what goes on in their lives as well. So just remember them also. The many unspoken prayers. Uh, again, as I look out, remember the many people that are not here with us this morning. There are many that are not with us. And as I, as I look out, um, it looks kind of lopsided. Uh, as far as that, we, we you know, uh, we do miss the people who are not with us, who are not here with us. And so just remember the many people who are not here with us and pray for them. And if you get a chance, call them. Call them and just let them know that we're praying for them, we miss them. And if there's anything we can do, just let us know. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you this morning and we do thank you. We thank you for all that you have done and are doing in all of our lives. We thank you for your many blessings. Even in spite, in spite of all the trials and tribulations we go through and the many things, unexpected, unexpected things that we face, we do thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you 
We lift up in prayer the many, many people that are dealing with different types of physical ailments and physical problems. There are many in our midst that are sick, that are under the weather, and we pray for them. There are many that are dealing with different other types of physical ailments, and we pray for them. We lift up Danny Hall and the family, pray for your will and for your help in their life. Miss Joy Schinkel, Miss Hattie Carter, Jake and Francis, Tony and Kathy Vespo and the Vespo family, little Dylan, and of course many, many others that are dealing with different types of physical problems and physical ailments. We pray for the Patea family. We lift them up before you now. We pray and we ask for your grace, for your mercy, and for your help in their life. Help them, Lord, as they cope with the death. Give them grace and strength. For this other one, the Propowski family as well, where they have lost a loved one and unfortunate circumstance there, we pray for this family as well. We lift them up. And for those who have lost a loved one because of death, we lift them up and we just ask you for your grace, for your mercy, and for your strength. We pray for the men and women in the military and their families. Continue to be with them, continue to help them. For the many people that are not here with us this morning, there are many who are not here, and we lift them up. Don't know the circumstance, don't know what's going on. Some are working, but there are some who are not working, Lord, and have no reason for not being in your house, either here or somewhere, worshiping you. And we lift them up before you. We do not judge, but we're concerned. Concerned not only for their physical well-being, but also for their spiritual well-being. And so we lift them up before you as well. We pray for the many people in need of Jesus. We pray for salvation. Friends, family members, co-workers, and even strangers. We pray for salvation for so many people. Again, we just lift up all of these prayers before you and the many, many unspoken prayers as well. And we lay them at your feet and pray for your will to be done. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. For well, off to our hymn turn to 516. Let's stand as we sing when the road is called up yonder.
of what you're blessed with. See to it that all this, that all is collected is used for the furtherance of your kingdom for the spreading of the gospel. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> God, Mindy and I will sing together a song, a familiar one, it is well with my soul. Oh, yeah. 
many things that we go through in life, trials, tribulations, tragedies, uncertainties, there's one thing that we can be assured of. The Lord is ever present with us. He well with my soul, no matter what I may go through, because He is with us day in and day out. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn, if you will, briefly to John chapter 12, the first 11 verses here looking at the anointing of Jesus by Mary, the sister of Lazarus and of Martha. And we see a very interesting thing that is, takes place in John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11, looking at basically three objectives here. The devotion, the deception, and also the declaration. We will see these three things come from these 11 verses as we read together. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given to Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, that is an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, whom, who later betrayed him, objected. I could just see him furiously objecting to what was being done. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was a keeper of the money bag, and he used to help himself to what was put in it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, for on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. It's amazing how the Lord works things out. Today, from just from the Gospel of John, the first 11 verses, we want again to read and see and visualize how Jesus does and does not change the lives of people. In the days of Jesus, there were those who and like us today, living today, Jesus will either make a difference in your life, or he will not. You will either follow Jesus and believe in him as the Messiah, or you will not. There's no in-between, no matter how you look at it. Now, Jesus, according to the Gospel of Matthew and Mark, at, is at the house of Simon the leper. Now, it is thought and believed that Simon was married or was the husband of Martha, the sister of Lazarus. There is no confirmation on that, but this was the thought and the idea surrounding this, this house. But he was at, according to Matthew and Mark, he was at the house of Simon the leper, and Martha and Mary were there along with Lazarus. Now, the Jewish leaders, they are very furious not only with Jesus, but now they are furious with Lazarus. How dare Lazarus be raised from the dead? They wanted to kill both of them. Both Jesus and Lazarus. They want to kill him, both of them. A large number of people were coming to where Jesus was, and they saw Lazarus with their own eyes. And thus, seeing Lazarus, they put their faith in Jesus as the Messiah. The proof that he was indeed the one who has come from God, the one who is God walking in the flesh. Many were coming, and as they were putting their faith in Jesus, 
after seeing that Lazarus was indeed alive. However, understand that even though many were coming and putting their faith in Jesus, we do not know how many were genuine, how many were real. We do not know how many truly did profess faith in Jesus as the Messiah or only as a good man, a prophet, someone who was doing the work of God. However, from these verses, again, we can observe at least three things that have taken place. First of all, we see the devotion, the devotion of Mary, the sister of Lazarus and of Martha. If you notice in the first three verses of this, we see Mary's devotion, we see Mary's love, we see Mary's perfume bottle, and also Mary's hair. All of these things belonging to Mary. What is your most valued and prized material possession? What do you value most in this life? Under what circumstance would you gladly give it away? What do you value most? What would you do, and how would you give it away gladly? Here we see Mary comes to Jesus. Nobody twisted her arm. Nobody begged her to go and do this. She comes freely. She comes willingly. She comes to, unto Jesus. And she takes this very expensive bottle of perfume that belonged to her to do what she wanted to do with it. And more than likely, this was to be kept because it was very expensive. Notice, it cost, what, at least a year's wages back then. She kept this probably for her own burial because of how much it did cost. But to her, she brought something that, that, that she valued most of all, this bottle of perfume that she kept for her own burial. And so she gave it up and gave it away freely and willingly to Jesus. She took this very expensive bottle of perfume, broke it, and poured it on the feet of Jesus. And then, taking her hair, understand that back then, the hair was basically up in a bun type. It was not allowed for women to have their hair flowing long and flowing freely, like you see so many today. So her hair was long. So she takes her hair and unwraps it. After pouring the perfume on it, she gets down on bended knee. She takes her hair and she wipes the feet of Jesus with the perfume that she had just placed on his feet. Again, we see the love of Mary unto Jesus the Christ. What Mary did was indeed a blessing to Jesus. But also understand that it was also a blessing to her as well. She considered it an honor and a privilege to do this thing unto Jesus. It was an act of love, pure love. It was an act of someone who truly believed in Jesus as the Son of God as the Messiah. It was an act of sacrifice. She sacrificed and gave her best. Not seconds, not thirds, not her leftover. Understand, she could have gotten a le least amount of perfume or, or one that wasn't so expensive. Could have broken it open, and, but she took the very best that she had it was worth a year's wages. She took the best, she gave it to Jesus. What have you given to him? Have you given him the best that you have, or the least? We see here, again, Mary gave what was most precious to her. And how did she give it? She gave from the heart. She didn't give it begrudgingly. She didn't give it because she had to. 
She gave it because she wanted to. Love, devotion. She gave from the heart. Her faith, her devotion, her gift was one from one who truly believed in Jesus as the Son of God, as the Messiah. She gave because she wanted to. Her devotion was outstanding, as was her love, as was all that she did. Where I can just see her humbling herself before the Lord and giving unto her and presenting him with this. I can just visualize her doing this and all of the disciples as well as her brother as well as all the people there just looking and saying, what's going on? As Mary pours this on his feet and then takes down her hair and wipes his feet with her hair. Very unusual. But yet she does this. It does not matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter what anybody else, how anybody else feels about it. This is what she is going to do. You know, there will be times where we too need to take a stand just like Mary and say, this is because I am who I am because of Christ. I take a stand for him and for what he has done. A devotion is outstanding. Secondly, we see in verses 4 through 6 the deception of Judas Iscariot. The deception. And we have those people in the world today and understand we even have them in our churches as well. People who are but yet are not. The deception. Notice Judas criticizes Judas was a thief, but also Judas was not a true believer. There was this hypocritical, unbelieving disciple, handpicked by Jesus. His name, Judas Iscariot, and Jesus knew it from the beginning. See, we can deceive many people in this life. But you can't deceive the Lord. The Lord knows the heart. He knows what we think, even before we think it. Before we even say a word, He already knows what we're going to say. But understand, He already knows what's in our hearts. He knows what is there. Judas, he followed Jesus. Ju Judas was with Jesus. He saw all of Jesus' miracles. He heard the words. He saw what took place and what Jesus had done. All of these things. And yet, what we see here is that Judas criticized Mary for what she had not done. He criticizes Mary not because of her act of love or her act of devotion. She criticized, he criticized Mary because he saw the money that he could have had from selling his perfume for a year's wage. Can you imagine? This money slipped right through his fingers. Gone. Oh, when she broke it open, I could just see him hold his heart and oh. Oh, why did she do that? That could have been sold. And the money could have been used. And I could have put it right in my pocket. You remember the movie, I know everybody does. Comes on every Christmas. It's a wonderful life. And there's one man there that I think exemplifies Judas Iscariot. His name was Mr. Potter. All he cared about was himself. He constantly criticized everybody and everything. And Jimmy Stewart played the man, he says, what, what gripped him most was the fact that you can't get what's gnawing at you, but you can't get your fingers on. And there was this little building alone slipping through his fingers. He was an evil man. He was a man who was greedy. What is this kind of man that Judas Iscariot was? He was a man that only cared about one thing, money, himself in the things of the world. How sad. Now, it is true, as I mentioned, 
Mary could have used the least expensive perfume. However, understand this, that for Judas Iscariot, the point was, it wasn't the least amount or how much it was, his motives was un unpure. His motives was not, be for that, it was unpure motives. Now he was angry at both Mary and at Jesus. They had allowed this perfume to be wasted and he could not enrich himself. Oh, can you imagine what he was thinking of all that money that just flew out the windows? That's all he thought about. You know, it is sad that that's all people, that some people even think about today. And there's nothing else that they think about. You know, it is said that a person who criticizes a lot doesn't really have a change of heart, doesn't truly know the Lord Jesus Christ. The person who is always finding fault with others truly needs a heart change. Judas, he there he saw all that Jesus had done, and yet even through all of that, who was Judas? He was an unbeliever. Judas was a thief. See, Judas had a heart problem. He also had a spiritual problem as well as a people problem. How sad that all he did worried about was the money and the things of the world. And just reading a little bit of what we see about Judas, I would surmise that he was really never a very happy man. And if you know, if you remember the story as well, even after he got the 30 pieces of silver of betraying Jesus, it didn't even make him happy. Even that made him miserable. It made him a very even sadder person. Because you see, he didn't have the most important thing in his life. He didn't have Jesus in his heart, in his life. Even after seeing all the things that Jesus had done. The deception. There are people like that in the world today. But sadly enough, there are, many, there are even many people in our churches who are like that. First and foremost thing is to know Jesus Christ. To have him in your heart and your life. He is first and foremost. Mary knew this. Jesus was more important than anything that she owned. But for Judas, it was just the opposite. He wanted more of what this world had to offer. And no matter how much more he got, he was never happy. How sad. And thirdly, notice the declaration. The declaration of Jesus as he announced to Judas and to the rest of his disciples in verses 7 through 11. Notice the declaration. This is for my death. This is for my burial. You see, this was for, the, for his death, his burial, and also his sacrifice that he will make. The sacrifice of him giving up himself on the cross. Dying a human death and then being buried for us. See, Jesus so declares and he tells Judas and the rest and all who are there, the reason that Mary is doing what she is doing is for my death. She is anointing me because I will soon be sacrificed. I will soon die and I will be buried. Now, whether or not Mary knew this we do not know. There are some who think that she did, and there are some who think that she did not. We do not know if she knew. I think, according to what the Word of God says over in Acts, none of them knew that Jesus was about to die. But no matter what, she does this at the approval of Jesus. If you, it's recorded in Matthew chapter 26, as Matthew records it. Here he tells all who are there, he says, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare, prepare me for the 
burial. I tell you the truth, whatever, whenever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will always be told in memory of her. Why? Because she gave willingly and freely. And she gave up what she had was best. Mary is preparing Jesus for his approaching death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus again will sacrifice his life on the cross for the sins of the world. Jesus defended the actions that Mary had done. Matter of fact, he honored what Mary had done. He showed favor and said what she is doing is both honorable and favorable. Mary responded by faith. Her motives was one of loyalty and of faith in Jesus. I believe that Mary knew Jesus to be her Lord and her Savior. Judas, he worked for Jesus, but he did not love Jesus. Mary loved the Lord Jesus. Judas, he lost the opportunity to put his faith and his trust in Jesus. When Mary, she grasped it. She knew it. Judas saw, but yet still did not believe. Mary saw and did believe. And all it took was one time. Can you imagine how many miracles Judas saw that Jesus had done, even the ones not recorded. There are many other things that Jesus did that are not recorded in the Gospels. And Judas saw all of these things happen. Mary only saw one. She saw Jesus raise her brother from the dead. And from that thus, she believed in Jesus as her Lord and her Savior. She grasped what took place. Mary and Judas are two opposite ends of which one who is truly born again, and the other truly is condemned, who does not believe. It says in verse 11 that many were putting their faith in Jesus the Christ. What about you? Have you truly put your faith and your trust in Jesus? Are you like Mary? You gladly give up all that you have for him. Or are you like Judas? Uh, I really don't believe. I know it may be true or may not be true. But yet have not really put faith and trust in him. Mary, because of her faith in Jesus, went on to be with the Lord. Judas, because he did not put his faith and trust in Jesus, he died and went to hell. And there he lives forever and ever totally separated from God in total darkness because his heart was not right before the Lord. Because he did not give his heart to the Lord. Instead, he gave his heart to the things of the world. Where is your heart? Do you truly know Jesus? Does he live here? Do you know him as Lord and Savior today? Let us stand. Almighty God, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, for the many, many things you've done. Lord, if there's anyone here this morning whom you have spoken to, revealed yourself to, they too can come unto you. And like Mary, they too can give themselves to you. I pray if there's anyone here that you're calling, that they will come unto you today. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to hymn number 318, the nail scored hand. As we sing in all four hands, whatever the Lord is leading you to do, you come as we sing.
pray Christ, through his word, has spoken to all of us today, and that we can convey this everywhere we go. We invite you to come back tonight, 6 o'clock, for our evening worship. This coming Wednesday, Bible study in the kitchen in the back at 7 p.m. Again, write it down, make a note of it. Next Saturday, before you go to bed, set the clock forward one hour. We like every time again next Sunday. Also, next Sunday, we will have a special business meeting discussing time, Sunday school and morning worship. Be here for that. Have an idea. Go from there as boys in the business meeting after the morning worship next Sunday. Men, for all men who would like to join us, we'll be at Ryan's at 7 p.m. this coming Friday. We'll be at Ryan's. Meet us there. We'll have fellowship together. Let the Lord is upon your heart. Pray for those who are not here with us this morning. Pray for them. Call them. Let them know that you missed them, that they were missed. And that we all did miss each and every one when they're not here. So pray for them and also call them and let them know that we're praying for them. Again, just look up the many, many in prayer and just remember each other in prayer during the course of the week as well. Now, please us in closing prayer. Our Heavenly Father, again, we thank you that we're able to come together, worship together, share with one another, pray for one another, be with one another. We thank the Father for the blessing you bestowed upon us. We thank the Father for the strength that you give us to get through certain situations. Knowing, Father, that you're always there. Knowing, Father, that you know how to handle each situation. Pray, Father, for those who weren't able to be here. Bless them wherever they are, whatever they do. Be with us as we go out separate ways. Bring us back so we can come together again and worship and fellowship again. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. I pray that if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, and if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at church at 985-214-9343. And feel free to call but if you're out of town or if you don't live near here, seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today. So if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free to call us and let us know if we can help you your eternal life, your salvation, your relationship with the Lord as well.